the fact we've got uh, 5,000 public buildings right across the whole country connected to gigabit speed fibre broadband. That cost £163 million to deliver. And in doing that, it's created a whole load of new gigabit infrastructure that can then also be used uh, to spring off to do uh, homes and businesses as well. That's the first bit. The second bit is we're announcing uh, today £563 million worth of contracts. That's over half a billion pounds uh, for companies to bid for to install, again, gigabit uh, broadband, super, incredibly fast broadband, 30 times faster than uh, super fast broadband to hard to reach areas uh, around the whole country, uh, often rural areas where uh, commercial broadband companies uh, find it uneconomic to go. So that will help make sure that right across the entire country, from north to south to east to west, people are getting uh, the right kind of broadband connections. At the moment, we've already got 97% coverage of uh, super fast broadband. That's the 30 meg broadband. The uh, gigabit broadband is about 30 or 33 times faster. We've currently got 68% availability across the country. We want to get that up to 85% by 2025. And this gigabit connection is unbelievably fast. You can download a two-hour movie in a matter of a few seconds. It's incredible. OK, so just to go over the timeline again, this is obviously very ambitious. You want it done by 2025, did you say, Minister? So, yeah, so we've already got 97% uh, coverage of superfast broadband. That's the 30 megabit. Uh, on the gigabit, the really, really fast uh, connection speed, like a movie in a few seconds, we're currently at 68% availability uh, by population across the country. And we're going to get that. And that, by the way, I mean, three years ago, that was only 8%. So we've gone from 8% up to 68% in three years. And we want to get from 68% up to 85% uh, by 2025 and get it almost complete as quickly as possible thereafter. And this is nationwide or more in the north and nor east or more in the south and southwest where, where would you say it is minister it's it's nationwide the whole the whole point okay. about leveling up is the whole united kingdom uh, north to south scotland wales northern ireland the whole of our united kingdom uh, is 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 treated uh, the same and we make sure that these uh, these connections are available right across the entire country so nobody gets left out or left behind well powerful headlines i'm sure emanating from that but some troubling headlines perhaps for some also uh, boris johnson will make it more difficult for the tories to win the next election after the party scandal so says one of your colleagues sir robert sims or symes who's the mp for pool do you concur no, look, not entirely. Obviously, I've got full respect for, uh, for for Robert, but I think what will determine the outcome of the next election are issues like, you know, how have we done on jobs in the economy? Uh, on jobs, we now have a record number of payroll jobs. Unemployment, only 3.7%, has not been lower since 1974, which is before I was even born. Mm. We saw last week, obviously, the Chancellor's announcement, a uh, £15 billion package to help people with the cost of living challenges. As there are global challenges, but we're determined to do everything we can domestically to offset those. And people in the lower income one third of households are going to be getting £1,200 as a result of last week's packages. We're recruiting 20,000 extra police officers. We're about two thirds of the way through that. We're putting record amounts of money, £39 billion into the NHS. Why, um... We have never in history had more doctors and nurses. I think those are the issues that the British public will rightly judge the government on when it comes to the next general election. Why therefore have 24 of your colleagues, Conservative MPs, criticised calls for the Prime Minister to quit and 11 criticised him publicly if things, is going well, if things are going such gangbusters? Why might that be? Yeah. I mean, we should be clear, first of all, that represents less than 10% of the parliamentary party. If you wanted to know their motivations, you'd have to obviously ask, ask them that question. What I think is important are those issues I mentioned. And the fact, for example, we've been uh, leading the world together with the Americans in supporting the Ukrainian government. These are the things that I think make a real difference to our place in the world, to our life domestically here at home. And that's the record that we're going to stand on at the do next you, election. Do, do you think it does mean a lot for people here at home if they're having to queue at food banks that we're helping Ukraine? Well, we're helping Ukraine because freedom is at stake, right? And yeah. freedom, I think, is non-negotiable. But we are obviously doing a huge amount to help people domestically as well. I mentioned the £15 billion package last week. That's on top of what we've done already. I think that's a total of £22 billion. Uh, things like the 5p cut in fuel duty, the national living wage just a couple of, a couple of months ago uh, went up by 7%, which is £1,000 a year for people on the national living wage. Uh, for people on universal credit, we've changed the taper, so the £2 million 
then people in lower paid jobs get an extra £1,000 a year. These are huge steps designed to help people on lower incomes. It's obviously vital we do that, but it's also vital we protect freedom around the world as well, which we're doing in Ukraine. Obviously, a government can do both things. Indeed. One newspaper is reporting there's a live debate about the possibility to overturn the ban on new grammar schools, uh, despite opposition from some quarters of the civil service. Government advisers are said to be open to the idea of rethinking legislation, particularly as it is reported. They would be very popular in the red wall seats. Would you be a fan of the return to grammar schools, Minister? Well, I've got to, I've got to be honest. I went to a grammar school you in did. South you, London. You went to St. Uh, Olaf's. It was a school my I late did. brother attended. It's a very good oh, really? school. Yes, indeed. Well, it is a good school. Very my good brother school. went there. My dad went to Bromley Grammar School. My mum went to a grammar school in Essex. So I wouldn't have you gone really to Oxford. You really are a grammar school boy, aren't you? Yeah, I am, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I wouldn't have gone to Oxford and studied physics were it not for that grammar school. I wouldn't be a member of parliament and a minister. Uh, were it not for that grammar school in South London. So I just personally feel very strongly about what grammar schools uh, can do for local communities and for people from ordinary backgrounds like mine who otherwise might struggle to get on. So I do understand how important grammar schools can be for people from those sort of backgrounds, backgrounds like mine. Uh, I th- I'm not sure where, where Nadim Zahawi, the Education Secretary, uh, is on this. Uh, so I don't want to, I mean, it's obviously an education department issue. So uh, I, I don't want to, I don't want to speak for him. Uh, you'll have to ask uh, the Education Secretary what his, what his views are on it. Indeed, but you have a view. You would be supportive of the idea, I sense. Well, I, 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 you know, so I benefited from a grammar school education and I can see how grammar schools help people from uh, ordinary backgrounds uh, achieve their potential. Of course, we do have grammar schools at the moment in the UK. Yeah, not new, and, and, the and of course you can. Yeah, well, there is this um, provision where an existing grammar school can open a satellite yes. grammar school. That is allowed at the moment. I think mean, a, f- a small number of grammar schools have done that. And in fact, I've been encouraging the grammar schools in my but, next door borough. So I'm in Croydon, Sutton's next door. I've been encouraging the Sutton grammar schools to explore that. Um, but this is obviously a different idea, which is about brand new grammar schools. And as I say, it's up to the education secretary to decide how he wants to take that forward. So I don't want to I don't want to speak for him. All right. Um, I've got to get a question from you uh, as regards the fan, the treatment of the Liverpool fans uh, in Paris on Saturday. We know that uh, inquiries are beginning within the football authorities. What do you think the French authorities need to do now, Minister? Well, I think, first of all, the UEFA need to properly investigate exactly what happened so we can really get to the bottom of it. Uh, the pictures that I saw last night circulating on social media and on the TV showed fans, uh, including children, and disabled fans uh, who were quite clearly not causing any kind of trouble uh, getting pepper sprayed. So I was deeply concerned by what I saw in those in those uh, in those video images. So we do need, I think, an urgent UEFA investigation to find out exactly what happened. And lastly, on Friday, the Chancellor announced he would be giving his energy rebate of four hundred pounds to a charity. Will you be doing the same? I hadn't thought about that until you asked Nick, but uh, I think that's a good idea. Yes, it'll, I'm going to give it to a local charity in Croydon. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Minister, thank you for your time. Chris Philp appearing here on LBC. What, 8 o'clock? News is next. On your radio, on Global Player, and... Play LBC. Leading Britain's conversation. This is LBC. From Global's newsroom at 8 o'clock, French authorities are due to meet this morning to review the chaotic scenes which marred Saturday's Champions League final in Paris. Liverpool 